on at least two occasions in recent months. It was claimed Diana... This claim about Princess Diana is being reported by the Telegraph's man in London, Bruce Luden. Diana has sought to participate in events of great national significance. What, the trooping of the colour, perhaps? No, Luden said. Diana wanted to participate in... Specifically, the IRA bombing of London's Docklands in February, and then the massacre at Dunblane in Scotland in March, but has been blocked by the Queen from doing so. She's such a wet blanket, isn't she? Good evening. This football report from the Brisbane Sunday Mail's Damien Barrett needs no comment from me. He dribbled the ball through his own behinds to tie the scores. And from the same paper, a certain unfamiliarity with the most basic technology. Tom McDaniels wields the anvil. A quick memorandum to Peter Cullen. The Illawarra Mercury story about Indonesian politics referred to... Mr. Megawati's allies. Mr. Megawati. Mr. Megawati's leadership. This, Mr. Cullen, is Megawati Sukarno Putri. She's no mister. An equally embarrassing botch from the Fairfax Herald's economic correspondent, Paul Cleary, who thought that the Audit Commission had found that... The Commonwealth's assets exceeded liabilities by $73.4 billion. Plus, their taxing power sounds pretty good. So, why destroy the ABC? And last in this group, the urban giveaway 9 to 5, getting a bit personal with a bride, whose gown they described as... D-lusted satin. Better not mentioned. Compromise may bedevil a great deal of journalism, but we might have expected front page news to escape the worst excesses of proprietorial self-interest. Not in the Ballarat Courier, though, where the whole of page one was given over to a retail promotion. Ballarat's annual crazy day was a day of crazy bargains, crazy antics by crazy characters and buskers and crazy giveaways. But none crazier than this sort of journalism. Understandably, no journalist was prepared to put his or her name on the non-story, which included a quote from... Courier advertising manager Stephen Humphrey. But we regret that he didn't disclose that the Ballarat Crazy Day was simply a promotion devised by the Courier to sell advertising space in the paper. This exciting and colourful promotion will create sales for your business. A crazy promotion by the Courier which then had to ensure there was no awkward news to push the money-earning promotion off the front page, and somehow the Courier managed to do it. In WA, it takes the form of the Melville Fremantle community dumping any pesky journalism from its front page to make room for the... Great House and Land Giveaway! Community newspaper group Chief Executive Chris Wharton said the promotion was the most exciting he had been involved with. Maybe they don't have an advertising manager. Like so many others, it's a promotion designed to tie in businesses who advertise in the paper. Nothing for nothing. In Brisbane, the Murdoch Suburbans are into this stuff with a will. Here's how it's done. This week... Westside News launches the Business Achievers Awards. Which are... An initiative of Quest Community Newspapers. And, by all accounts, terribly well received. A reaction that comes as no surprise to Westside News's Zone Advertising Manager, Jane Hedger. You can tell when journalism's gone out the window, they quote their own advertising manager. But so what? It's just one little suburban freebie. Well, no it isn't. This is Mr Murdoch's Wynnum Herald a week later. Today, the Wynnum Herald launches the Business Achievers Awards, an initiative of Quest Community Newspapers. An enthusiastic response, of course. A reaction that came as no surprise to Wynnum Herald Zone Advertising Manager, Tim Asher. They had an editorial too, though you don't often see this sort of thing in a leading article. Simply fill out the nomination form in this and subsequent issues of the Wynnum Herald. In this and subsequent issues of the Northwest News. Another week, you see, another editorial in support of the promotion in another Murdoch suburban. Today, the Northwest News launches the Business Achievers Awards. Quoting Northwest News Zone Advertising Manager Art Connell. Those are from the last three weeks. But the Murdoch organisation has 14 Brisbane suburbans. 
On Wednesday, you'll see the same story, advertising manager quote and editorial, in the Caboolture Shire Herald. And in succeeding weeks, commerce will win over journalism in, in order of appearance, the Southern Star, Southwest News, City News, City and Shire Leader, Northern News, Redcliffe and Bayside Herald, Northside Chronicle, Southeast Advertiser, Southern News, Pine Rivers Press, all 14 of them, and all done to this master plan from Murdoch Head Office. Week one, launch. Story on page one, highlighting 1995 success, naming sponsors. Logo must be used. Week three. Story inside, with comments from local civic leaders applauding awards initiative. What if they don't? Silly question. Week six. Mention sponsors, use logo. Week 10. Include stories on sponsors, major and local. Week 12. Cover the awards night as a news event. I suppose it's quite useless to point out that any journalist complying with this dictation is in breach of the code of ethics. Thought so. This particular form of journalistic prostitution taints not just a few giveaways. The Adelaide advertisers on the game as well. The meat market. Searching for love. Weekend magazine, inside. Wherein we find the Tizer mag devoted to singles and their quest for partners. Rod Savage put his name to it. Some people find it so difficult to find Mr, Mrs, Miss or Ms Wright, they decide to advertise their private lives. At that point, using methods such as the advertiser's connections should be considered. Actually, the Tizer's Lonely Heart Classifieds got a workout. The advertiser's connections suits Jeff. Columns like connections helps. Christina received 151 responses to her ad. Sarah, who advertised in connections, has had about 400 responses. And the point of all this? The classifieds, also known as the rivers of gold. Life has been unkind for me and my family. Why don't men seek inner beauty? Why indeed. And here's one, another Murdoch Metropolitan Daily, where it all comes together. We're 150 today. The Courier Mail, 1846-1996. Helping the News Corporation celebrate, the Courier Mail's in-house media writer, Julianne Schultz, who took a swipe at... The Ages Advocacy, the Sydney Morning Herald's stuffiness, or the Australian's nationalism. And wanted to see her paper... Cease being chief PR for Queensland Uber Allies. Allies, Julianne? Someone named Schultz should know better. And she quoted her boss. Many Queenslanders see the media's role as giving a helping hand to Queenslanders having a go. This is nonsense. Chris Mitchell, the paper's editor-in-chief, said last week. Mitchell, admirably high-minded, is also boss of the Brisbane Sunday Mail, which last month devoted an extraordinary amount of attention to what it called... The ultimate sale. Which it is my melancholy duty to inform you is just the Ballarat Courier's crazy day writ large. Grace Garrick put her name to a promotional story. Tom and his wife Julie will be one of 40 exhibitors combining for the ultimate sale at the RNA showgrounds. And the story ran some hype from... Janina Cowley, Managing Director of Organisers International. Remember that name. The ultimate sale was the subject of a great deal of advertising in the Courier Mail, including this 20-page lift-out, and quite extraordinarily, it even pushed the Courier Mail's index and weather panel off the front page for four days. And there was a multitude of these sorts of promotional pieces passed off as genuine copy. This kind of thing is terrific. They should look into having one every year. Organisers International's boss, Mrs Janina Cowley, must have been delighted. Since her marriage nine weeks ago, everything's been terrific. At the risk of being churlish, I should point out that the organiser of the ultimate sale is the wife of John Cowley. John Cowley is managing director of Queensland Newspapers and the former Janina Webb runs the super successful Organisers International. It's wonderfully symmetrical. John Cowley is the affectionately regarded younger brother of Ken Cowley, Rupert's number one in Australia. Everyone's a winner. The Courier Mail, Ken, John, Janina, Bargain Hunters, though possibly not Chris Mitchell, who you will remember 
doesn't subscribe to the back-scratching theory of media philosophy. No doubt he's been rereading this Courier Mail editorial, published even as the ultimate sale was in progress for consolation. It is true that a newspaper lives in the twilight zone between a normal commercial enterprise and a public utility, and that this can create circumstances in which there is a very fine line between commercial reality and editorial principle. A very fine line. It ought to be a bloody chasm. But in the case of Queensland newspapers, there's no line at all. Incidentally, one element of the Mitchell paper's promotion of the ultimate sale was a raffle. Win the ultimate holiday. Five nights at Hayman Island for two people. But I'm sorry, Ken, John, Janina and Chris. Employees of Queensland newspapers, Organisers International and their immediate families are ineligible to win. Must be something to do with ethics. But never mind. Rupert owns Hayman Island anyway, doesn't he? Speaking of Rupert, and I have been, haven't I? Most of the papers sacrificing news for promotions of their own revenue interests have been his. A word about next week's program, in which my guest will be a Murdoch tabloid editor, Cole Allen of the Sydney Daily Telegraph. Here's a soupçon. Newspapers cannot and must not be things that simply absorb news stories each day. They must uh, have some soul, they must have some character. And, uh, you know, Rupert Murdoch has always encouraged me to think that way. That's next week in full. Good night to you.